All right, Assassin's Creed Revelations. Yes, baby, it's time. So I'm finishing up the grind to platinum the entire Ezio collection on the PS5. Now I've already covered the last two games on my channel. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're covering the final game in the trilogy. Having a total of 50 trophies to grind out, including DLC trophies, this ended up being the most frustrating game in the franchise so far. Other than the standard AC shenanigans, a bunch of this game's trophies also forced me to play through these bonus levels. And I honestly still don't know what the hell was going on, but I sure did not enjoy it. Ubisoft basically force-fed me Desmond's backstory in these levels, and the connected trophies ended up being just pure torture. But before all of that, the game wants to tell us what the f*** is going on, because the last game ended in absolute chaos with Desmond killing Lucy, and then he fell into a coma. So him being our playable character is kinda weird, because the game now takes place in his own head while we're stuck in the Animus. And Subject 16 is also here, but he has a human body which is kinda cursed. It's all kinda confusing, and to be honest, my brain started to bleed a little, but what's important is that Desmond is trying to wake up, wake up, and Ezio is old now. <coughs> now, it was about damn time I got my first trophy. By completing sequence 1, I would get best served cold. Sequence 1 basically sets up the game and introduces everything we need to know. So Ezio is collecting these ancient keys to unlock Altair's huh? library. And the whole story kinda revolves around trying to find these keys before the Templars do, because I'm sure they would wanna do something really really bad, and that makes Ezio very scared. Also, the game tells us how to be sneaky, but I don't need that because I am of course the stealth god. Anyway, we slip and slide after a Templar guy, who apparently has some kind of book we need. <laughs> and that's it for the first sequence. Now, sequence 2 takes us to Constantinople, which is the main city of this game and where I'll be spending the coming 30 hours of my life. We immediately get greeted by Yusuf, who is the leader of the Ottoman Assassin Brotherhood. And he's pretty cool, I guess, both because he's just a chill ass dude, and also because he gives us hook blades, which allows us to climb, like, super fast. And also use zip lines, which is honestly my favorite part of this entire game. We also meet Sophia, who is once again Ezio's new love interest. But to be honest, it's kinda creepy this time, with Ezio being an actual old man. Salve. Incredible. <laughs> so Yusuf shows us around the city and explains who the bad guys are and why they need to die absolute horrible deaths. And we then had to defend one of the assassin dens from being captured, which was fun at first but actually got very boring very fast. We also captured another den by taking out a Templar captain, and that was the ending of sequence 2, which gave me another trophy. Sequence 3 continues the search for the keys, and one of them was in Sophia's basement for some reason, which was pretty weird, but hey, don't we all have secrets down there? Now I'll be honest, I had to restart this mission multiple times, because to get the full synchronization here, I had to avoid all detection throughout this entire mission. And since my stealthy guard powers were still on vacation, I ended up alerting the guards more times than I'm comfortable admitting. I can still complete the missions without getting the full sync, but to get the trophy found memories, I'll have to achieve 100% sync in all 9 sequences. Meaning that any synchronization challenges I miss, I have to go back and re play later. I eventually managed to sneak past all of the guards, which gave me the key. Now the coolest part about these keys is that they also give us Altair flashbacks. So we basically get to look at Altair's life from the first game all the way up until his last very sad moment. Now there were a lot of other shit going on in sequence 3 as well. This guy called Piri teaches us about bombs, and after I crafted enough of these to surely break some kind of Geneva convention, I got the trophy Craft Maniac. I also ended up committing mass murder by assassinating 50 guards, and the game rewarded me with the trophy Overkiller. The assassin recruit system that got introduced in the last game returns here. Now I really liked the idea of this before, but this game goes even further. After leveling up the assassins we recruit, they even get their own missions when we promote them to master assassins. I promoted my guy Marius, and after we tracked down some assassin trader guy and Marius absolutely demolished him, oh my god, I got the trophy My Prodigy, and I also got sealed the deal for completing sequence 3. As sequence 4 went on, I started to realize that the story kinda sucks. 
Look, I'm all here for a good drama, and I guess that political intrigues have been working out before. But brother, I do not remember a single one of these guys. And I don't care who the best sultan would be. I will say however that some of the missions were actually sick as f**k. And I can't hate on Ezio's musical skills. If you spot me in the street, please kick me in the loins. Now, with the help of Sofia, Ezio keeps finding more keys and at the same time, he finds out more about Altair's library. And this is all that we really do for the next three sequences. I did get two other trophies here though and the first one was silent but deadly, which I got by killing three guards at the same time with throwing knives. <laughs> oh. And also, since I honestly enjoyed my assassin recruit missions more than the main story, I ended up having control over all cities in the Mediterranean defense game. And of course, this also gave me a trophy. Sequence 7, however, got pretty insane as Ezio travels to this fucking Mordor underground city and we fight this scary ass dude who just kind of becomes immortal because, sure, why not, bro? And then we blow this whole place up just as a way to say fk you to this guy. <laughs> and then we're off to Constantinople again. Being back in the main city again, we find out that everything has gone to shit while we were gone. The Templars have apparently been very naughty boys and murked Yusuf, RIP the homie. And some dude called Ahmet has also kidnapped Sophia. He forces us to hand over all of our keys, which sucked, but at least we get to save Sophia now, or so I thought. Who the fuck? But as a matter of fact, the real Sophia is currently cosplaying as a fucking piñata, and after we save her again, Ezio realizes that damn I really just got disrespected and the craziest chase scene probably ever takes place where we fly after Sophia who's chasing Ahmet while we're fucking swooshing down on soldiers and damn this was actually pretty fucking cool. Anyway, we finally catch up and almost fall to our death by eating shit, but luckily Ezio pulls out an emergency parachute and shortly after that Ahmet's brother just kinda shows up and kills him. Yay. Now this gave me the next to last story trophy, and after we go back to the original Masyaf assassin hideout, where Altair's library is also located, the game ends very beautifully with Ezio finding the apple of Eden that Altair has left behind, and we finally tie up Ezio's story with him realizing that this is the end of his journey, and that it's now time for Desmond to wake up and save the world, just like the gods have been telling him his entire life. So as Desmond woke up from his coma, I got the very last story trophy. Now yes, I know that I've been moving through the story very fast, and the reason for this is that I still have like a billion trophies to get. Oh my god! There are still a bunch of collectibles and random things to do, and I also have to cover the DLC trophies as well. But first of all, I have to go through the pain of completing Desmond's boring ass missions. Like I mentioned before, these are like challenge levels where we also get some backstory or whatever, but let's be honest, you don't care about this. The DLC also consists of just these shit levels, but at least some of those were actually difficult. So let's just continue for now. Back in the normal game, I decided to just do some of the random easy trophies. The first one being almost flying, where I literally just need to glide all the way from the Galata tower down to the water. Yeah, boy. I also found Duccio, the ass tard who cheated on Ezio's sister in the first game. So I naturally beat him up and got the trophy bully. Now, as always, I understood that I could not keep playing if I didn't get my hands on some better drip. And in fact, there was an armor set in this game with two connected trophies. To get our hands on this armor, I had to complete the Hagia Sophia mission, which also gives us the trophy Holy Wisdom. However, to even unlock this level, I had to find all 10 memoir pages which were scattered throughout the map. And finding all of these gave me the trophy worth a thousand words. The Hagia Sophia mission was pretty cool and I got to jump in a secret pool, which I'm pretty sure would break our neck, but whatever, we got our drip, so... Slay?
Also by climbing to the top of this building in under 25 seconds, I got the trophy spider assassin. With our newly acquired drip in hand, I felt that it would only be right to go back and redo the missions where I missed the full sync in order to finally get the fun memories trophy. Now thankfully, since I already was going for the full sync, I only had a few missions to go back and replay, and so after a while I got the trophy. Pyromaniac is a trophy that you get by completing all bomb missions in the game. These are given to us by our old friend Piri, and basically shows us how each type of bomb works. Stupid. This will of course only be used for the greater good, isn't that right Ezio? <laughs> I also had to go back to defend the first assassin den once again, because to get the trophy Iron Curtain, I'll have to complete one of these defense missions without using the cannon, and since the first defense mission is by far the easiest one, I got this trophy pretty fast. One of the more time consuming trophies has to be the mentor. To get this, 7 of our assassin recruits have to reach the rank of master assassin. To do this, they first have to rank up in the Mediterranean defense game, and then we need to promote them by completing individual missions. Repeating this process 7 times did take a lot of time, but thankfully the XP leveling missions are done in the background, so I could work on the other trophies simultaneously. So after I promoted Constantinos uh, Comninos, I got the trophy. The one collectible trophy that I had been fearing the most was Cat, where I would need to collect 100 Animus fragments that were scattered throughout the map. Mind you, all of the AC games I have played up until now have had this type of collectible with hundreds of them and where there are no markers on the map. So I was pretty scared, no cap on god. But surprisingly, after collecting like half of them, the rest appeared on the map, making the whole process a lot easier. <laughs> so after a while I got them all, which also gave me this very beautiful trophy. And also, while I was running around like an actual maniac, I randomly got the trophy show off by parachuting onto a zipline. Another surprisingly time consuming trophy was Fast Fingers. To get our hands on this bad boy, I had to get thieves to loot 50 dead guards. Now, thieves are easy to find on top of rooftops around the map, but for them to be able to loot bodies, you'll have to complete certain thief challenges first. When you do get this skill, it's kinda broken, because half of the time, thieves will just stand over the bodies or walk past them. Like boys, you literally have one f***ing job, is that so hard to do? It took a while, but I did eventually get this trophy. At this point, I had saved up a bunch of combat trophies, because generally these are the most fun to go through. I started with the trophies I Can See You and Lightning Strikes. The first one, I Can See You, is achieved by killing 5 guards while being covered by smoke, and the second one, Lightning Strikes, is gotten by assassinating 5 guards in under 5 seconds. Now I guess I'm just kinda ass at the game at this point, but for whatever reason, this took too many tries than what should be acceptable, because I would just mess up and get a slow ass animation every time. But eventually I got my shit straight and managed to get this one as well. The trophy friend indeed is gotten by completing all faction challenges for one of the factions in the game. I chose to go with the assassin faction because, you know, gotta represent the boys. And by using my different assassin skills, like calling in recruits or performing an arrow storm, the trophy popped. The trophies Monster Dance and Mosh Pit both required me to make use of our highly illegal poison equipment. To get Monster Dance, I had to poison a guard in a place where he can kill 3 civilians. I don't know why the game wants to reward us for doing this, and I'm wondering who decided to make this trophy. Truly a sick individual indeed. Now, the trophy Mosh Pit is gotten by gathering 10 guards in a position where you can target them all, and poison them at the same time. Yeah, Mosh Pit. <laughs> the final real combat trophy was Mousetrap, which requires you to stun 5 guards with caltrops and then smash them into the depths of hell with scaffolding. It turns out that the next trophy varies heavy in every person's playthrough. To get tax evasion, we'll have to find one of these Templar tax collectors and take back our money. If you manage to spot him while just playing the game, then lucky you, cause I did not. Meaning that I had to figure out another way to find this little guy. 
Now after extensive research on the interwebs, it seems that he has a slight chance of spawning near banks whenever we get our income deposit, which happens once every 20 minutes. So I did what any good assassin would do and waited nearby for very, very long. Hello there. The next trophy is the last one I had to get in the main game. The trophy I'm talking about is Sage, which requires us to collect every book in the entire game. And these little guys are f***ing expensive. So before I could even get my hands on all of these, I had to go back to the basics and grind for some money. This took a long ass time since, again, we only get our income every 20 minutes. But we literally need multiple hundreds of thousands of cash to buy all of the books. So half a million later... That being said, the remaining trophies were all part of the Lost Archives DLC. And oh man, this shit is like the Desmond missions before, but the last trophy tilted me so f***ing hard. Now instead of covering Desmond's backstory, these missions give us the backstory of Subject 16, and also tells us why he's trapped in the Animus. Skill issue honestly, rip bozo. To begin, I had to be on the lookout for these Decipher fragments, because if I manage to get all of these, I'll get the trophy to find all pieces. Luckily these are actually very easy to find and I could hear them every time I got close. Now in all honesty, playing through these levels is not very difficult normally, since the game gives us checkpoints literally like every step we take. So for now at least I blasted through these missions very fast and also got all of those very cute fragments. Yippee! I also ended up getting the trophy Save Yourself by, wait for it, saving myself. From a pretty scary fall actually, so that's cool. Hey! Completing this whole story reveals that we're stuck in an infinite time loop as level 1 starts again. But thank you god, I was able to break this loop by taking an alternative route in mission 5, which ended the entire DLC and gave me the trophy breaking the loop. I was now only 2 trophies away from the platinum, and they both required me to do the same thing. I had to play through some of the most difficult parts of the DLC without failing one. And let me tell you, failing is really f***ing easy when you literally just have to look at a laser the wrong way for the game to fail you. The first one was cross sticks without dying, which requires us to make it past this part of memory 7. Now with this insane skip that literally skips half of the area, I did this on my third try. Yes! But shit starts to get real with this last one. Impress War and Vidic is achieved by completing the Animus testing sequence of memory 4. Sounds simple enough, but this sequence goes on and on with moving lasers and walls and everything to make this as annoying as absolutely possible. And the worst part is that the sequence starts in the middle of the memory, so every time I failed, I had to play through the whole memory again. I failed over and over and I actually thought that I was going crazy at this point, but on my 11th attempt, this finally happened. Yes, yes, oh my god, the conqueror, oh my god. <laughs> so yes, that's how I finally got the Assassin's Creed Revelations Platinum. This took me way longer than it should have, but I have to say that I really will miss our homie Ezio in these games, because the next game in the franchise is of course Assassin's Creed 3 with Connor. I'm also cooking up something a little special as we speak, so make sure to like the video and subscribe to stay updated, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye bye!